Hi. There are a few of you on already. I'm, I'm just going to wait a few minutes till one o'clock to uh, maybe gather some more viewers. And make sure my internet can handle this. <laughs> Hi, Jess. Can you all see the kind of hiccuping that my, uh, is it my camera or my internet connection maybe? Hi, Morgan. Can you all hear me okay? Somebody let me know, please. I'm seeing a lot of hiccuping in my video. Let me know if you can see it too, and I will just make sure I talk really slowly and clearly. <laughs> Okay, great. Thanks, Morgan. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Jess. People are uh, welcome new joiners. People are just letting me know if you can see any troubles with my video. This is the first time I've done this. It's exciting. We're just going to wait a couple more minutes for one o'clock to see if anyone else wants to join. Hi, Tina. Thank you. Thanks for letting me know. Just about one. We're going to get started after we give people a few more minutes to join us. Thanks for joining. I see a lot of you on. Hello. We're just going to wait a few more minutes. While we're waiting, if um, I'm going to go over this again, but if you want to go gather some supplies, what we're going to use today is um, a needle and thread, which I have in a little kit here, um, some paper, maybe some coloring supplies um, toward the end. It's not really part of the main craft, but um, I I'm, might color some here on video. And... Uh, scissors which was i don't think was in the original materials list so if you want to go grab a pair of scissors if you've already collected the other things um that would that'll be helpful Okay, maybe we'll just wait one more minute for some latecomers.
Okay, so most of you have been on for a few minutes now, I think, um, and heard me just run through the materials list, but I'll do that again in a second. Um, we are going to go ahead and get started. My name is Sharon Kelly. Um, I did paper flowers a few weeks ago, so you might remember me from that video. Hello, welcome back. Um, these videos have been so fun to watch along with all of you making these amazing crafts with the other um, artists and craftspeople who have been leading you on this adventure as we are all staying home and safe. So we are in my basement. <laughs> Welcome to my basement. If the internet gets a little funny, that is why. Um, I also live way out in the boonies. So my, my internet is, um, I hope it stays, I hope it sticks with us. Um, so I'm Sharon Kelly. You can just call me Sharon. Um, and today we are going to be working on a book. We're going to create a book. And um, in order to do that, we are going to be using a needle and thread. So if you have really little ones, you may need to make sure that you, the helper, are using the needle. Um, or, you know, if you have very dexterous kids or young adults, teens, um, just be aware that needle safety is uh, really important. You don't want to stick yourself. Um, as I was doing my sort of model book last night, um, I had no trouble at all getting the needle through my paper. So hopefully it's not going to need a lot of pressure, but if you're worried about it, you can use a thimble, um, which will help protect your fingers a lot as we're using the, the needle. So I just have a thimble that came with my little kit here. This is what I'm going to be using. It's just like a $1 kit um, that came with some really terrible scissors. I also brought down some real scissors. Um, but it just has a variety of different colors of thread. And then it has my needle in it, which for safety is kept in a little sponge. So if you have a little household sewing kit, that's a really great place to find most of these materials. And um, otherwise you will need regular scissors, a needle and thread if they're not part of a kit. And then um, what I have is resume paper because we are running low on printer paper and we don't wanna go out and buy any because we are staying home. So my paper is a little bit heavier than printer paper, um, but it works great. Um, the, the, I have a couple different colors. I have this kind of funny gray color. I don't know if you can see, it has little flecks of gray in it. And then I also have kind of a parchment color um, that I made a cover out of for my, um, for my model book. I also have with me some coloring materials. I have colored pencils. And I have a really thick black ink pen because maybe by the end when we have a completed book, we can do some illustrating. So we can actually draw in our book, um, give it a title, give it some illustrations, give it some words. Um, so that's what the pen is for. You don't actually need the pen to make the book itself. Okay, uh, we are gonna go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna rotate the camera a little bit. Um, hopefully I will still be able to see your messages. If you have questions or comments, please let me know. Um, it is a one man show. I think you've been, if you've been watching the other artists videos, you know that we are alone in our homes, um, staying safe and staying socially distant. So if I um, don't see your questions or comments right away, I do apologize. It's, it's just me down here. Okay, so I'm gonna move you a little bit. Bear with me so that you can see my work surface better. There we go. Pretty straightforward. Okay, move that out of your way. So what we're gonna do first is select our paper. If you are using um, printer paper, that's fine too. Um, you can use construction paper, but these are um, going to be the pages. So again, I'm using this kind of slightly heavier resume paper just because that's what I had handy and that's what um, I don't mind using up. So any kind of paper is good. 
this might be a great time to use if your construction paper pack came with white construction paper. Um, I know a lot of people don't use the white because you have regular printer paper for that maybe, or you have notebook paper or whatever. So if you have a pack of construction paper, this would be a good time to use the white paper from that. Um, and then, you know, you could use a different color construction paper for the cover, which we're going to get to in a little while. So here's my book that I made last night. Just going to show you this is our end goal so that you have an idea of what we're going for. Okay, so I made mine with a quarter fold. So I folded the piece of paper twice to get this size. So you can see I folded the, which we're going to do in just a second, folded the piece of paper twice. Okay. And then I'm going to sew together the, um, each individual little folded pack. And then I'm going to sew, sew together the, t the two or three or however many you want to make. You, you sew, then you sew the little packs together. These little packs are called signatures. That's some book vocabulary for you. These little guys are called signatures. All right, so that's the end goal. Um, like I said, I have two signatures in this one, but you can make as many, you can make your book as thick as you want, you can make it as big as you want. So you could have um, a book that is only one fold of paper. So let's get started with the folding and I'll show you what I mean. So we're going to start with a hamburger fold. Um, so I'm taking it long ways like this, hamburger fold. And we're just going to make really, really sure that we line up those corners really, really good because they're going to just get folded another time and it's going to stand out even more if they're not super, super even. So I'm actually going to line up both, both corners just to make sure that both ends are super, super straight. Okay, and then I, I have a little bit of fingernails, but you can crease this with whatever you want. So I crease it with my fingernails, but if you want, you can use your scissors, right? So you can press on that edge to really make it nice and flat with your the, blade, the closed blades of your scissors. So now here's what I was saying just a second ago. If you wanna stop at this size, this is a half sheet. So then this is the size of your book, right? So mine that I made last night is a quarter. And this would be a half. So you can see I made a little book, but you could make a big book if you wanted to. So the steps are the same, but if you're going to make a big book, you can just stop here and start folding more pages just with one fold. I'm going to make another small book, though, so I'm going to give this another hamburger fold. Okay, it doesn't matter which direction, you know, you can fold it back, you can fold it forward. We're going to end up with the same results. So again, I'm going to line up my corners really, really good. And start making that little fold. And then, just like last time, I'm going to make sure the other corners are lined up, too. Just make that a good, good fold. Then we'll give it another crease, which you can use your fingernails or you can use a tool. Okay. And then we have a nice little quarter folded piece of paper with nice crisp edges, really, really well lined up at the corners. So these are the two open corners. You can see how, how nicely they lined up. That's going to be important because that becomes your book, right? So you want the pages to be even. Okay, so I'm going to do this several more times um, so that we end up with several of these quarter folded pages. Um, and then these are going to be our pages in our book. So right now I have, if you think about it, right? So you have um, one, two, three, four pages for your book. So they're not, they're not cut at the top yet. We're going to do that in just a second. But if, if you want to kind of calculate how many pages you want in your book, each one of these little guys will give you four pages. 
So that's why I got out a big stack of paper. So we're just gonna go ahead and do a bunch more of these, gonna line up the corners really, really well. Ooh, that's hard to see. Let me do this. Where are those corners? Okay. There we go. I'm gonna do some speed folding that might not be as accurate as otherwise, but we'll just get rolling here, right? Just because we're making our stash. We ma we're making our stash of pages. Okay, and then we're gonna give it another fold. Be real careful of those corners. And give it a good crease. All right, and we have another set. Ooh, that's giving me some trouble. There we go. And we have another set of four pages. Okay, corners look pretty good, actually. So you can see here, I was a little bit less careful. I don't know if you can see that, actually. And these, this corner up here does not, it's not quite as perfect as that last one I just did. So that's, um, that's why you want to be careful of those corners. Make sure that they're lined up real, real good, because that is where your pages will end up. The other thing you can do, of course, is once this is all done, you can take your scissors and you can trim all your pages so that all your pages line up real good, um, even if your folding wasn't perfect. I just prefer to skip that step because it's an extra step. But we can look at that once we have our book finished. We'll, we'll check the pages and see how well they line up and see if we want to trim them or not. Okay. So here we just made a third one. Again, just it's just a quarter, quarter folded piece of paper with nice sharp edges. Nice well creased edges. We're getting a good little stack over here. Okay, I think I'll I think I'll do um I think I'll do three sections, three sets of signatures in this book. My my demo just has two, remember? Just has two sections, two signatures. So I think we'll do three in this one just to kind of see um when we sew that spine of the book together. That way we can experiment with what the sewing is gonna be like. Okay, so now I have four of these little guys, and I'm going to aim for six because there are two single sheets of paper in each one of these signatures, each one of these sections. So we're going to just do two more. That'll give us six, which is three signatures with two sheets in each signature. Let's give that fold a good crease. Okay, so now we have five total. We'll do one more. So this is going to give us four pages per sheet, which means our little book is going to have 24 pages, but that counts the top and the bottom page, right? That counts every single page. So we're gonna learn a little later that probably you're gonna sacrifice your top and bottom page to make a cover, which leaves us with 22 pages. Okay, so now we have six of these individual quarter folded pieces of paper. Um, if you chose to stick with half folds, um, six is probably the minimum that you want to do because if you think about it, that only gives you 12 pages because if you did a half fold, that's only two pages per sheet. So you might want to keep folding or maybe you were folding faster than I was. Um, if you just did half fold. So I'm going to put this away. We are finished with the paper. Now we're going to make our signatures. So each signature, which is one of these little 
one of the bundles of pages, each signature is going to get two sheets of paper. All right, so what I'm going to do is just kind of place one inside the other. So imagine that these are both little books already. And I'm just going to put one inside the other like this. Okay, easy peasy, right? Okay, so now we have what's beginning to look like a book with a bunch of pages. Now they are still stuck together at the top. In fact, if you find if you find an antique book in a used bookstore that still has the signatures uncut, that's a really rare find. That means that book was never read because you can't read a book if the pages are still stuck together. Okay, so here we have our nested pages, right, to create a single signature out of two sheets. Okay, now you can either cut the tops of the signatures um, right now at this stage, or we can just wait until they're kind of sewn together before we do that. So let's just wait until they're sewn together. All right, so now I'm gonna get my needle and thread ready. I'll just put them over there. I'm gonna open this guy up so we know what we're working with. Okay, so I have my needle. I'm going to pull it out of the safety foam. I will make sure that you can see all of this because these are very, very small materials. So I'll just make sure you can see them um, as we get rolling. I'm going to pick a random color that's going to be easy for you all to see. I'm going to go with this teal um, thread if I can get it started. There's the end chose poorly. Okay, there we go. So I'm just going to give myself a nice generous piece because we can use it multiple times. I'm going to use my scissors. So be careful with your scissors. Be careful with your needle. I am going to thread my needle, hopefully. Might need the help of some spit. Oh, nope, I got it. If you need to lick the end of your thread, it's totally fine. You know, that's a shortcut. Okay, so I have my needle threaded. And we're going to be using teal for our signatures. You do not need to knot the end of your thread. Not knot. Don't knot. Because we're going to end up tying it together with the other end when we cut to finish the, the sewing part. Okay. So I'm gonna make sure these are nice and lined up at the top and the bottom and all the sides. And then I'm just gonna go at it. I'm gonna start right here in the middle. You can measure if you want to, if you're a perfectionist. I really don't mind at all. Uh, it, you know, if these are, if these look handmade, that's good because they are handmade. So I am going to um, just push my needle into what looks like the middle of this seam about halfway down from the top and from the bottom. And like I said earlier, um, my paper lets the needle go through really, really easily. So if you need, if your paper is giving you some trouble, if you need um, some help getting your needle through your paper, do yourself a favor and use a thimble and push, okay? It'll save your fingers from that little pointy end of your needle, the thread end, okay? My paper, though, like I said, is very, very easy to get through. All right, so I'm going to pull it through to the outside of the signature. And I'm going to leave myself a little tail in here. And then I'm kind of I'm going to just kind of keep it where it's where it belongs by by uh, holding it with my thumb. All right, then I'm going to go on the outside. And I'm going to do maybe about halfway between let me see if I can get you a better view of this. Okay, don't lose my tail in the back. So here's where I came. This is the outside view. This is how I came through from the inside with my first needle pass. I'm gonna um, go about halfway between where I came through and the bottom or the top, depending on your orientation. Halfway between here and one edge. Okay, and I'm just gonna go back through. So I'm gonna just, do my best to find that seam and go back through to the inside of the paper. Okay, so now, now my needle is back through over here. It's hard to see. There we go. 
there's my needle. It's back through to where I started, the inside of the, of the signature. Our goal here is we're about to create a figure eight with thread. If you look at it from the edge, we're going to come out, in, out, in. So we're going to create a figure eight using three holes. I'll show you how that works. OK, so this is the outside. Here's the inside. My needle's back. I'm going to hold on to my tail of my thread. Go ahead and pull that through. So now we have a nice stitch on the outside. All right, I'm going to go back through the middle section, this middle hole that I already have, so that I end up on the outside, back in the middle. And then I'm going to take it to the same spot on the other end so that I'm make about halfway between the middle and the other edge of your paper. And we're just going to estimate. You can measure if you want to. There we go. OK, and we're back into the inside. See how I'm still holding the thread, the loose end, with my fingers. OK, so we're going to pull this through. And now we're ready. We're, so we have two nice stitches on the outside. Looks great. And on the inside, we have the original edge and we have our stitch that came from that first step of the figure eight. And then we have our other end here. So what I'm going to do is take this, I'm going to tuck it under. I'm going to tuck it under just like that so that it goes under that existing stitch on the inside. And then I'm going to pull it through. So now they're just kind of loop-de-loop. -loop. They're not knotted yet. But now we have two stitches on the inside. And then I'm going to take this other end and I'm going to knot it to the end that has the needle on it. So I'm going to just tie a little knot here. I ended up using a lot of my thread because it's doubled up. You can use double or single. Um, but that's why, you know, I, I said I was giving myself a nice, generous, long piece of thread. And turns out this is not long enough to do a whole nother one. So we're going to cut it and we'll get a second piece of thread. Okay, so the knot then ends up on the inside. And the outside has your two neat little stitches on it. Okay, it's hard to see, but there's like a, the middle, the middle um, hole here is where the two stitches come together. All right. So there's our knot. Everybody with me? How we doing? We doing okay with this figure eight? Figure eight and thread? So I just trimmed the little knot. And now we have one signature where the two sheets are pretty securely sewn together here. Everybody good? Okay, so now if you want to, it's time for you to cut your signature pages apart. Remember, because be the way we folded this, the way signatures work, we still have pages that are, that are um, attached to each other. So I'm just going to give this um, some quick cuts. The better you get up into the seam with your blade, um, the, the more even your pages are going to be. That way you don't get um, oh, a messy overlap just like I just did. I'm talking and not paying attention. Okay, so I'm, I'm pushing upward with my scissors pretty hard so that I can get nice and deep up into that crease of the paper. Everybody good? Everybody with me? How'd that sewing go? Can I figure eight? Okay, so here's what we have now that we've trimmed the signature pages. We have one signature. There's the middle with our nice neat stitches. And each of the pages is secure. You can see, you can kind of see the, um, the, how the thread has come through. You can see this in uh, professional books too, right? You can see where the threads have secured the pages all together. And then on the outside, we have our nice, neat two stitches there. All right, so I'm going to kind of do another one of these real, real fast. Um, you can do it at your own speed. 
Uh, but I just know we want to get to thinking about a cover before our time is up. Oh, and look, I just ran out of teal thread. So we'll have one more signature done with teal, and then we will have to switch to a different color. Or maybe we'll just get through two of the signatures today. And then you can do as many signatures as you want there at home. So you can make this as many pages as you want, depending on the math, how many folds you're using, and how many signatures you prepare, how many of these little bundles you prepare. All right, so quick review. I have two sheets of paper. Each one is quarter folded. I'm gonna nest one inside the other. I'm gonna make sure they're lined up real nice on the top and the bottom. And then I'm going to do a figure eight with my needle and thread. And again, I'm just kind of estimating where the middle is. I'm going to estimate another like halfway between that middle and one edge. Come back through to the inside. Go back through the middle to the outside. Find that next halfway point. Careful of your fingers back there in the back. And then we're back on the inside. I'm gonna pull that to the inside. I'm gonna tuck the thread under this existing stitch, which is a little loose. I'm gonna pull on that other end real quick. So I'm gonna tuck that through there so we get another little stitch. Whoops. Hmm, it's got a little loose. I'm gonna just gonna pull on some things until it tightens up. Okay, and then I'm gonna knot the two ends together. So this is the inside. I'm gonna knot these two ends together. You can tell, so I'm, I'm still kind of narrating what I'm doing here, but you can tell these go actually really quickly um, once you get the hang of doing the figure eight with the thread. That one took me hardly any time at all. Okay, so now we have the knot on the inside, the two neat little stitches on the outside. We're gonna trim our thread. And just like that, we have two signatures. Okay, I'm gonna trim. The signature is still, um, the pages are still folded together. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim this one. Okay, flatten out how the, the scissors makes the make the pages a little bit curly. Flatten that out a little bit, and we have two little bundles of pages. So now we have a total of 16 pages, right? Because each signature is two sheets of paper, each piece of paper is four pages. So we have 16 pages here, and this is the size of the book that I made last night so it's a nice nice little size okay um you know maybe we will go ahead and make the third signature that i prepared just because that one went so fast so let me get a new piece of thread it's not going to be teal this time uh what do we have that might be close let's see let's see about this color kind of a light teal that way you'll be able to see the difference when we sew the signatures together. You'll be able to see the difference. I'll use a, a very different color thread to do that step and it will be easier for you to see. Any questions? Everybody doing okay with all the sewing? It's kind of a, kind of a different use of needle and thread, right? You don't often um, sew paper together. But this is how, this is how handmade books are made. Okay, so I have my new piece of thread. We're gonna do our figure eight out through the middle, in through one end, careful of your fingers, 
Hmm, that didn't go very well. Let's try that again. Okay, there we go. In through one end, back out through the middle. Same spot. Pull that nice and tight. Make sure that stays tight. This thread is not very happy. Okay, there we go. And back in through the other end, about halfway down. See if we can get this to cooperate. Okay, so now we're in the inside. I'm going to tuck this end through the original inside stitch just so that it's tidy. And then make sure everything's tight. Just going to pull on the on both ends before we make ourselves a knot. Okay. Now we're going to knot these together. And I've been using two knots. You don't want to overdo it, remember, because these are the insides of your pages. So if you overdo it with knots, um, it's just going to make your pages bulky. Okay, so now we have a third set of pages, a third signature. I'm going to trim this. We are done with that color thread, and then I will trim my signature pages apart here. So now we have the original plan, which was 24 pages, because we have three sets, we have three signatures, and each signature has two sheets of quarter, quarter folded paper. Is that math right? <laughs> I'm just, I'm talking, I'm not really paying attention to the math. Seems right. That's what I said a few minutes ago, right? 24 pages? Sure. Okay, so now we have three beautiful signatures. If you want to just stay here, and each signature can be its own little book, if you only want a few pages, you're done. Right? So if you only want maybe eight pages in a little tiny book, here they are. But if you want to make yourself a larger book, now we have to put these three signatures together somehow. So we have our neat little stitches. Um, we have, you know, three contact points. We have the one at the bottom, the one at the middle, and then the one at the other end. Um, and what we're going to do, I'm going to use a, a warm color thread so that you can tell the difference. We're going to actually kind of create not a figure eight because there are three bundles. But we're going to create a looping pattern at each one of these contact points. So we have one, two, three, or top, middle, bottom, however you want to think about this. Edge one, middle, edge two. We're going to just create a kind of looping pattern to secure them all together. So I'm going to use red this time. I think that'll be easiest for you all to see the difference between the red and the teal. And I almost lost my needle. Be careful with your needles, <laughs> especially if you drop them on the floor. Pick them up right away. Do not leave them for later. You will find them with your feet. It'll be really unfortunate. Probably worse than stepping on a Lego. Okay, so now we have our red thread all lined up. I am going to make a nice, neat little stack with my three signatures. And we're going to create a kind of weaving pattern. We're going to go in and out, right? So like a figure eight, but with extra loops. Okay, so I'm just going to, I'm just kind of winging this. I'm going under thread number one. Um, and then I'm going to go on the outside of thread number two. And I'm going to hold... I'm just going to hold the end of this with uh, my thumb, just like last time. So I'm going to go under. I don't know how hard, easy this is going to be to see. I, I'm under thread number one. I'm going to go over thread number two and then under thread number three. Like this. Okay. Then I'm going to go back across under thread number two so that they stay 
so that it's kind of woven. See that? So that's what I mean by figure eight. You're kind of creating an over under situation, over under, over under. Okay, so now we can secure this up here at the top as close as we can get to where the threads came out. Now they're not all perfectly even and that's okay. Right, see how the holes are in different places? But I did a little weaving action there. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and tie off this end. Because we're back on, we're back on the edge where the end is. I'm just gonna tie it off real quick. I know you can't see what I'm doing. I'm just tying a knot. I'll show you in one sec. Make sure it's nice and tight. Okay, we'll tie a second knot. Again, you don't want to over knot. So two, I mean, really one would be fine probably, but we're going to do two. Okay, so then what you end up with is the end of your thread. You end up with this little woven together pattern. Okay. All right, we want that to stay as close to the top as it can. Then we're going to move to the middle. We're going to do it all again. This time we're going to do it because we have two. Remember, we have a thread coming in up here and we have a thread coming in down here. We can really weave these together so that they really stay put. We're not just going in one direction. We're going to go in. Whoop, where's my camera? There we go. We're going to go in. Um, we can kind of weave this way and this way. All right, so really this is about securing your three signatures together. I'm going to do over under over under again. But I'm also going to do over under um, using the central hole as another place to secure. Okay, so there I did like a little weaving, and then I'm gonna go on the other end of the hole and do the same thing, that central hole, because that gives us a great anchor place. So I'm down here now. See with that center hole in the middle. Okay, and then we're going to Get that middle thread woven in there. Great. So that what we end up with is this sort of woven, double woven figure eight kind of thing. Anything that you do, any kind of pattern of stitches that you do that helps secure these things together is totally fine. In fact, I'm just kind of gonna throw some more thread in here um, kind of willy-nilly just to just to secure things a little bit. So I'm going to just do another, maybe another figure eight, maybe throw another knot in there. Um, we'll just see what happens. Because anything you can do to secure these both up and down and so up and down this way so they don't slide up and down, but also you want to secure it this way, right? So they become a coherent book. Um, just about anything you can do, um, any, any kind of way you want to tie some knots is going to be beneficial. Or do some, you know, do the weaving. I'm going to tie one knot here so that then I can move down to the bottom set of holes. And this will all stay put where it is. So one knot, and we're going to move down I'm going to move down to the bottom set of holes and I'm going to do the same thing that I did at the top. So I'm going to do like a little figure eight. If I can make this needle cooperate. Okay. And kind of the reverse here. There we go. Okay, so and what I end up with is another little woven piece. And then we can just kind of knot this off. So 
So let's tie a little knot. We have a lot of existing thread here, so we can kind of tie a knot around some of the existing thread and not really worry about um, adding too much bulk, right? So there, I just tied a little knot with the existing thread. I'm gonna trim off both ends. We'll have a look. We'll have a, we'll test this out. We'll see if it's how secure it is. Okay, so this is what mine ended up looking like. I went from one end, um, did a lot of things in the middle, and then did the other end. So now all three signatures are pretty securely tied together, right? You can, whoops, you can throw it around. Okay, there are some gaps, right? If I, if I really pull at it, the signatures will come apart, but that's why you want these to be nice and tight. Okay, that's why we did so much work there in the middle to make it nice and tight. All right, so now you have your three signatures, you have all your pages. Um, what's really going to help these all stick together nice and tight is by putting a cover on the book. All right, so what we want to do is um, I'm, I'm going to use a different color paper just for fun. You can if you want to, if you want to make a fancy cover. Um, there are actually some great tutorials online if you want to do like a fancy professional book. Um, there's a way to coat this in glue and cloth and then put a hard cover on it. So either wood or cardboard works great and then cloth again and then tidy up the insides of what the cover looks like. But what we're going to do is just use a different color paper um, to so just to kind of give it a contrasting cover. So this is where I told you I have a different color resume paper. I have this parchment style paper. Um, and we're going to just kind of wrap it. All right, we're going to do one of these. Okay, so just like you would expect. Now, one note is in my practice book from last night, you can see the pages are pretty even. Um, I don't know if you can see that actually. And I made a cover for it by just doing the same quarter fold, quarter fold piece of paper. And then I just cut, you know, half of the paper off. And this is what happened to the edges. The cover doesn't quite reach the edge of the paper because I didn't take into account how thick the book was going to end up. So when you make yourself a cover out of a different piece of paper, you want to make sure that you're allowing for the depth of the book, right? Because if you just cut the same, you know, quarter size, then it's going to not reach the edges because the depth is going to eat up some of the paper. So for today, I'm going to do this. I'm going to just kind of wing it. So I'm going to roll it onto its edge and then roll it onto the other side. And then that'll give me, I'm going to use my pen real quick. That'll give me approximately enough wiggle room to accommodate the spine because I just measured, just using the book itself, I just measured what it would need. So I'm going to uh, fold this to give it a straight line and then cut it in a nice straight fold. Okay, so then I know where to cut. And whoops, I'm not doing a very good job cutting here. Ooh, that was messy. Okay, but now when we fold it, now it's it's not the right height, of course, but now when we fold it, the edges should actually get to the edges of the book, right? They're not they're not down here because we forgot to measure for the width of the book. They're actually they sit in there nice and tight. So what you can do is um, create yourself a cover. Remember to give yourself this width of space so that your pages actually fit in the book. Okay, I'm going to set what we did today aside and I'm going to start um, talking about what I made last night because 
Um, we're just running short on time. I'm going to let you play with your cover by yourself. You can choose, you know, a different color construction paper. Um, if you wanted to play with something like cardboard, you create uh, just a flat front and a flat back, and then you kind of bind them together with a strip. You can do that on your own. You could use fancy paper, like um, maybe you have a stash somewhere of, um, you know, those patterned papers that you use for scrapbooks or that kind of thing. So you can use all kinds of stuff for the cover. So what I did um, last night was pretty much the same thing we did today, but I thought it would be fun to make a Mother's Day book because I can't go out shopping for my mom for Mother's Day, which is coming up in um, just about a week and a half. So what I did was I created what I'm gonna call a journal book. It has so many pages that I knew I wasn't gonna be able to fill up all of them with, you know, things mom likes or little love notes or whatever. Um, so, the front part is kind of the card part, the gift part, which is mom's favorite things. And then the back part of the book is just a journal for my mom to write in whatever she wants. So this is how I made that. I have my two signatures here and I have them sewn together just the way we just did. And then I have my cover, which again is a little short, but that's okay. I'm going to, I'm going to glue this on. And then I, what I think I'm going to do is actually flip a page from the back around to the front so that the seam is even prettier. Then I'm going to use this blank page to glue my cover onto it and then it'll open up just like this. So see how I flipped that page around from the back to kind of make everything a little tighter, but also to give me a page to glue the cover onto. Because you're gonna need to kind of sacrifice the front page and the back page for the cover to glue on. See, that's gonna glue onto there. And I didn't do this step yet because I wanted to show you all this, but also because I couldn't find my glue. <laughs> so that's the next step. I'm going to glue this on. So what I did was mom's favorite things. Um, you can really do anything. This would be great for siblings. Like if you had an older sibling actually make the book and then a younger sibling decorate it. Um, and I gave it a little title page. It says Happy Mother's Day 2020. And then I made some illustrations. So my mom loves her chickens. And my mom loves her garden. And my mom loves to read or likes to read. So I drew her reading, gave her some little books down there. So really, the, the, there's no limit to what you put in these books. You could have your own little journal. You could have a nice little sketchbook, right? Especially if you used pretty plain paper like I did. Um, or you can use lined paper. Um, when you use lined paper, be careful of the way you fold it because you're going to end up sometimes with that big margin at the top or right, the margins of regular lined loose leaf paper are going to give you um, some funny things because of the way we folded these signatures. So just be mindful of that. It still works perfectly fine. Any kind of paper works for this. So yeah, this was one way that I could kind of create a gift for my mom without going out to shop. And I know we are all shopping online like crazy. <laughs> I know I am. Um, but this can be nice because it's, it's, uh, it's handmade, right? Moms love handmade stuff. So that's why I chose to do this with my book. But really, you can do whatever you want with your book. Okay. And um, yeah, have fun kind of getting creative with this cover. Okay. So that is it for today. Um, we have our little books. We learned a new word that each one of these little bundles in a book is called a signature. 
And if you want to get creative with a cover, like a hard cover, um, poke around online a little bit and uh, see if you can find a way to use, um, you know, cardboard or different kind of construction paper, those sorts of things. Remember, you can also use the same technique to make your book really, really thick. You could make yourself a really nice, thick sketchbook if you wanted to make, you know, we made we made three signatures today, but you could have 10. And then what you want to be careful of is just that your binding here is nice and tight. The more signatures you add, the more heavy and the more kind of room for error there would be. So that would be a case where you would definitely want to look into um, binding it with a nice secure, a nice secure, um, maybe cloth cover or uh, cardboard cover. So that's it for us today. We made some nice books, maybe a Mother's Day present for mom. Um, I would love to see what you made. I, this was kind of a, a challenging or um, niche maybe craft. Um, I'm super into books. I think I said in my last video that um, I am an English teacher. <laughs> so I, that's why I thought of making books with you today. Um, because I just think they're really cool objects. And when you get a nice handmade book with the threaded signatures, um, it's really exciting. It's not just glue, you know, like a commercial paperback or something. Um, I think this, it's really exciting to kind of see the handy, the handicraft, the handwork that goes into a nice handmade book. Um, so I would love to see what you made if you make one of these books, um, especially if you make like a really big one. Oh, I think my video just died. Can you all still see me? I can't see me anymore on my end. Someone let me know real quick. Um, okay, my video just died on my end. Oh, and this wasn't scrolling. Okay, good so far. Colorful resume paper. I'm reading your comments in case you can still see me Um, because it wasn't scrolling for me. Fill the book with coupons for mom. Yep, we'll wash your car, do the dishes. That's a great idea. Okay. We still see and hear you. Okay, great, great, great. I told you at the very beginning of the video, my internet is so strange. Um, thanks, Morgan. Yeah, it's my connection. Okay, I see you. I see your comments. Great, okay. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna just keep chatting just for a second. Um, I said at the beginning of the video, I'm in my basement, so sorry about that. Um, okay, so yes, as I was saying, I would love to see what you did with your books. Um, if you could send a picture of what you made into us here on the Southern Alleghenies Museum of Art Bedford um, Facebook page, that would be awesome. We are going to make those into a video that we can, or a, you know, like a slideshow kind of thing that we can play in the museum actually when we are able to reopen. So um, that's your, you can have your couple minutes of fame if you want um, your artwork to be in a museum. We will have that um, slideshow. So do send us in your pictures. Um, tomorrow, Miss Jen is um, doing some ink work and is going to be special supplies. So if you want to go check out the event is already posted on Facebook. You can see what those supplies are if you want to use exactly what she's using. Um, I am sure she will have some other solutions too for stuff you already have at home. Um, but that sounds like a lot of fun. Do some ink work tomorrow. And then Thursday, Ms. Linda is back. She is going to do a story time with a drawing component. So 
that because of the story time is gonna be great for especially younger kids. Um, so everybody can tune in um, really to any of these, but that'll be good for your little ones. Um, last but not least, uh, as we all know, staying home has been super, super important for flattening the curve of this virus. And we, especially locally, are doing a really great job uh, making sure it does not spread. Uh, we, we don't have, as far as I know, we've been doing a great job keeping cases down. Um, so that's really important. It also means businesses are really suffering, including SAMA Bedford. So um, if you could, if you've been enjoying these videos, if you miss the museum, if you um, are excited for it to reopen and want to help it reopen at full strength, um, you can go to the SAMA website, which is sama-art.org and you can click on the blue donate button that would be super super great um, we'd all be really grateful just keep the museum running at full strength so tune in again tomorrow for some ink work and then on thursday for story time and drawing and i had a lot of fun making my books i hope you did too thanks everyone thanks for tuning in bye